Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, July 27th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Did you took a look uh, today at a piece of a malware that actually Jan covered in a diary a couple days ago. And one of the problems there was that the malware was encrypted and the password that was included in the email did not work. Jan wasn't able uh, to uh, decrypt the malware, but well, uh, did he did take up the challenge and was able to find the password. So he'll walk you through how he did this with good old John the Ripper. And a bit less than a week after Apple updated iOS, macOS, and iPad OS, we are getting yet another update for macOS, iOS, and iPad OS. This brings us up to macOS Big Sur 11.5.1 and iOS 14.7.1. Both or all three iOS, iPadOS and macOS are receiving a patch for one particular vulnerability, CVE 2021-3087. This vulnerability can be used to execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges. And yes, there apparently are reports of this vulnerability already being exploited in the wild, which is why Apple pushed out this fix so quickly. So don't be too surprised if uh, you are getting that pop-up. Now, if you haven't updated yet to 14.7, you'll be then asked to go straight to 14.7.1. Apple actually no longer offers 14.7 for download. And a report by BlackBerry points out that uh, attackers are tending to use some of the more exotic programming languages. Now, they're mentioning here Go, D, Nim, and Rust. We had examples of this in prior diaries. Go and Rust, I definitely wouldn't really call them exotic, but certainly not that widely common. Now, what is really in common among these languages is that there are not a lot of sort of reverse analysis tools available. A lot of the commercial tools, for example, still have a hard time with Go or just uh, adopted Go in more recent uh, versions. And that, of course, makes analysis of malware more difficult, giving attackers a fairly straightforward obfuscation technique by just using a less understood programming language. And Microsoft has an update on Lemon Cat and Lemon Duck. If you're not familiar with uh, this malware family, it's a coin miner, so nothing really overly sophisticated, but still it's one of the few pieces of malware that actually does attack Windows and Linux. Now it does use a wide range of uh, different vulnerabilities to gain access, starting with simple emails, but also things like, for example, exchange server vulnerabilities, Hadoop, Redis, RDP, SMB and more. So um, they pretty much try to attach to whatever they find open uh, to get in to a particular uh, system. But then again, uh, mal spam is certainly one way how it spreads. And uh, lately they're also adopting here some COVID-19 related uh, themes. Another interesting part about this malware is that uh, while as a lot of similar malware, it's highly automated, it does have some human interaction that comes into play sometimes. And Microsoft is promising a second part to analysis with more details and a walkthrough of how this malware exactly operates. And continuing with, well, uh, less common uh, programming languages, uh, Go is getting now some added uh, support from GitHub. And after all, yes, it is in the top 15 programming languages. So GitHub will expand some of its supply chain security tools that check, for example, for vulnerable uh, dependencies and such to Go starting anytime soon. And finally, for the uh, Kubernetes uh, people around here, Intezer has published a blog post showing how some 
Argo workflows may open up your system to exploitation. So double check uh, their blog post. The link, of course, will be in the show notes to figure out if uh, your workflows are susceptible. And well, I thought about a new way to raffle off a uh, Raspberry Pi in August. And uh, what I'll do as well, a lot of uh, listeners actually commented on, well, getting kind of boring that I always uh, report here recording uh, from Jacksonville, uh, Florida. Haven't really been moving over the last uh, one and a half years or so. Well, uh, that'll change in August. In August, uh, I'll actually start uh, traveling again. And uh, for anybody who can predict uh, where I will be, in August, the, whoever gets it the closest, or if there are multiple winners, will just uh, do a quick uh, pseudo random uh, drawing. Well, uh, that person will get a Raspberry Pi. And as usual, also, if you find any errors and notify me, uh, those entries will be added as well. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.